Hi, I'm Andy Burke, and today we're going to be tying Burke's bottom roller. We're going to tie the hare's ear version. It's a real simple fly. It's a takeoff on the Czech nymph nymphs, which are getting more and more popular in the Czech nymph method, which I think is probably the most effective nymphing method that's ever been devised to catch trout past indicators. It's, it's a very productive method. It relies on extremely heavily weighted, simply tied flies. And the bottom roller is just that. We're going to use a little bit of Arizona synthetic peacock dubbing in both the natural peacock color and the hare's ear color. For the carapace of the fly, the bottom roller, we use a product called Silly Skin, which is an adhesive backed skin that makes a great, great looking effect. You'll see when the fly is done. For the ribbing of the fly, we're just going to use Danville Fine Monofilament. That's the same diameter as a spool of 5X tippet material in your vest. So if you don't have a uh, little spool of thread like that that you can clip in a bobbin, just grab one out of your fishing vest. We're going to tie this fly with two bobbins because I need thread to tie it with. I need 5X diameter monofilament or 6,000th diameter to rib it with. I've got a little tungsten bead on the hook. This is a 3.3 millimeter, a size 8 hook. Typically I'll use 3.3 or 3.8 millimeter tungsten beads on a size 6 and 8. I'll use 3.3 millimeter beads on sizes 8 through 12. And then on 14s I'll use 2.8 millimeter beads. We're going to grab a little 25 thousandths lead wire and wrap a nice little lead underbody. This is a heavy fly. You're going to need to tie a few extras because you're going to lose a bunch of them but you're also going to catch a bunch of fish on them. Now, unlike a traditionally tied beadhead fly, I'm going to start the thread in front of the bead. We're going to finish the fly in front of the bead. On the bottom roller, the bead is there just for weight. I'm using it to get the fly down. I'm not particularly using it for any special flash effect or anything. Get our Dave's Flexamen. I'm going to load that lead, those lead wire wraps with Dave's Flexamen. Put a little on front behind the bead, grab our thread, and just use a tan 3 op monocord or similar thread, you'll be in good shape. We started the thread right in front of the bead, now we're just going to hop it back over to the back of the bead and wrap down through all that lead. So make a nice smooth little transition. There we go. We'll tie in our ribbing material. Like I said, I've got that mono on a bobbin, so I'm just going to use it directly off the bobbin, wrap it around to get it started, and then just tie back down over it, and I'm going to drape the bobbin over my vise here out of the way. I'm going to grab a strip of pearlescent silly skin, and we're just going to trim a point onto the end of it. The point's going to give a little taper at the back end of the fly and make it look a little more natural. Silly skin's amazing material. Created by a guy named Blaine Chocolate and Harrison Steves from Virginia. This stuff works great for minnow patterns. I use it all the time in tying a wide variety of nymphs, but particularly my bottom rollers because they're so easy to tie with this stuff. You're just going to take and peel the point of the backing paper away. Never peel all the backing paper off or you'll just have a piece of silly skin that's all stuck to itself. Tie in that point here. This is very stretchy stuff, so watch what we can do. We can tie it in, just stretch it. See, that reduces your tie-down area, so again, we're keeping a nice, smooth underbody. Stretch it. Let that sit out of the way right there. Now we've got our underbody taken care of. We're going to give it a final coat of Flexamet. And go to our dubbings. A little bit of synthetic hairs here. I'm going to dub this on slim. Most of the body's diameter has been made up with the, with the lead and thread under wraps, so you don't need to make a great big fat body on this fly. I'm just going to spin it right down the thread there. And we're going to use the two colors of dubbing. I'm going to spin them on simultaneously so we'll have the hairs here there. And I'll show you when we get to the, the peacock that goes directly behind the bead. We'll have it right there. Do 
is tape. And wind that stuff forward. Twist it up for a little extra durability there. Now you can see that where the peacock's dubbed in. Just brush that back. Wrap in front. Just going to pull the carapace over now. We're going to use a little bit of pressure as we pull this forward. And it's adhesive back. This side's sticky, so we're going to stick that to the back of the fly as I pull it forward. Pull it forward. Just press down with your thumb and forefinger. We'll get to the front. Just give that a couple of wraps to lock it on. Another cool thing, you can kind of stretch it, trim it. It's a nice neat tie down area. Now I'm going to grab my other bobbin and all we need to do now is rib the fly and whip finish and we're done with our bottom roller. Forward. This is where the fly really takes shape too. See those segments starting to come in and it starts looking like a critter of some sort, not just a little bit of dubbing and a bead on a hook. Trim off your excess monofilament. Wood finish. Trim the excess thread. And grab the old bug brush and scruff the underside of that fly up, make it nice and shaggy. It just looks more alive when you take a little extra time. And with these bug brushes, you can do it quick. You can scruff that fly up and make it look alive. And that's your finished. Burke's bottom roller in the hair seer color. Check out that cool pearlescent back. When that thing comes tumbling along the bottom, any fish that's looking for a meal is probably going to take a bite. Thanks, and you can always check out more at renoflyshop.com.